Hey, good evening. Hope you guys are doing well this Sunday evening, October 30th. I can't believe the month is almost ending. 2016. Holidays are coming in. Mm. What are you guys doing for the holidays 2016? Hopefully you spend it with loved ones, whether they're family and friends or somebody. You don't have to be by yourself. And if you do, maybe you enjoy your company. I can enjoy my company. So, you know, many, <laughs> most of the time, I have a good time with myself. But it's great to... You know, mingle with people that you love, especially during the holidays or whatever. So I hope you guys are having a wonderful evening. My name is Cheryl Howard. I am the founder of Get Your Life Back Inspirational Life Coaching. And so if you want to connect with me really quick, I want to get this out of the way. Sometimes I forget to give people my contact and then they go, I didn't get your contact or whatever. They end up finding me on Facebook or something. Um, my website is CherylYHoward.com. Also, my blog is Get Y, the letter Y, LifeBack.com. I'm on Instagram at Get Your Life Back number seven. I'm on Twitter at Get Your Life Back with a B A K because B A C K was taken. And on Periscope, when I do live broadcasts as well, it's the same as Twitter at Get Your Life Back B S S B A K. Um, also on Periscope and my Facebook Live group, which I'm excited about because now I'm going to be doing a sh I'm doing a show on Thursdays and for now in November I'm going to have. Um, Broadcast focus on help building healthy relationships. It is facebook.com forward slash Cheryl dot Howard. I'm sorry, Cheryl Howard dot get your life back. So that's facebook.com forward slash Cheryl Howard dot get your life back. I look forward to seeing you and I want you to catch my notifications of when I go live and when I do broadcasts and events that are coming up, speaking engagements and all of that. And also just different products and things that I have to offer that may be really help, very helpful to you or people you may know. So don't forget to connect with me on all of those different social media networks. Anyway, today I'm not going to keep it long. I want to talk about four important things, important to me, but also I know that it'd be helpful to someone else, especially you single individuals. We are living single. Okay, I had to get that out. <laughs> All you single individuals who desire to be married again and you want a meaningful relationship. You want to find that individual where you vibe together. You connect with them on most levels. Intellectually, spiritually, emotionally, psychologically. What else? And that you're attracted to physically. I, for me, that matters. That matters. It does. Um, so the four points I want to talk about today is mindfulness, thoughtfulness, reinforced standards, that are your reinforced standards, and meaningful content. And I'm going to break all of those things down. That, I, that First of all, they matter a lot to me. And I was thinking about these four points because over the last three years, and I'm single, I'm a single divorced mom, my daughter is in college, and this is her last year, and she's getting ready to graduate and everything. So I've been feeling a shift happening in my life in different areas, and I'm like, okay, and I'm feeling good about most of it and others. I'm like, okay, what's happening, God? What's, I feel like I'm getting ready to move somewhere. I don't, I don't know, but I'm just waiting to see what he said, what, what's going to happen, what's going to be revealed in due time. Anyway. So that's me right now. So I'm a single divorce mother of an adult daughter. I can't believe that she's an adult. Oh my God. Time just go, right? Anyway, so things over the last three years of meeting I'm single men. And so I want to talk about the experience of that because it's fun. the good thing of it is you learn some lessons. Especially if you made some, hopefully there were, you know, you didn't meet no crazy, you didn't meet no crazy people. I haven't met any crazy jokers out there that was like, oh my God, the police had to get involved, all kinds of crazy stuff. Because you hear a lot of things today. I'm like, oh my goodness, it's just scary. It can be very scary out there for single people, especially single women. Um, and I was comparing the relate, I would not, I want to say relationships because these men in particular, there was no really a relationship. You might have started out as maybe some type of, acquaintance or thought about building a friendship and eh, they didn't turn out to be anything it didn't last long or whatever which is good you get to meet people and you get the vibe and you get to find out you, you exchange data you get to know each other a little bit and then you realize it doesn't take you long to figure out that and eh, this is not going to work it's okay but God bless you God bless you so my brother in Christ is okay all good right hopefully it's all good two mature individuals being honest 
It's all good. But I was comparing the different connections that I had. And what I, what I liked about the different experiences I had is that out of some of the individuals, particularly two, no, three, three, I can say that they were constant reminders. And, and I know I'm skipping a little bit because I'm going to start with mindfulness. But they were reminders of my standards and reinforcing those standards. So if you haven't figured that out, meaning um, they're good guys. We were very compatible in a lot of ways. But there was a few factors that maybe the reason why things didn't work out. One of them being long distance for one individual just didn't think long distance would work at all. I'm like, there's no limit in God if, if you know, if... If God can bring us together, we or bring God in it, and, and we are compatible in so many ways, and we can really see ourselves doing life together as partners with a mission and with a purpose. God will bring us together. I've met, I, I have some wonderful friends who are power couples, and they have met and they lived in different states when they met each other. But I'm telling you, because they were so on one accord with each other, even spiritually connected, which is very important. First. It was like nothing else matters. It's like everything else can... So it's like having Jesus the center of your life and everything else will work out a center around that. Everything else will line up in order, will fall into place, basically. So, and so the relationship, spiritually connected, emotionally connected, and in and, and other areas as well, was really great. And that was not a problem. It's like, okay, well, one individual made the move. And I'm talking about sometimes it was the wife, the fiancé, or the... Yeah, fiance that might have moved to the, the our man state that she met, and I met, and I met people who the man moved to the um, wife state. I'm not the wife state, but they were engaged at the time or courting at the time, and doing a courting process. Basically, they got to the point where they knew they would be together. Then okay, then they had to come up with a strategy and a plan. So I know one particular male, such a great. He was, he's just a really cool guy. He is actually my, one of my former employee, employer's husband, but we had a long talk one day how they met each other. Great conversation. Um, they actually met online. I was like, okay, interesting. I had never um, joined or signed up for, subscribed to any online dating sites at this time, but I think he was, he was trying to get me to kind of think about it because he was saying, because he knew I was single and I had just moved to Virginia and he was saying, you, you, you haven't met it. I said, well, I only been here for about when I, this was during the time I was starting to work for them, him and his wife that he met in another state. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. I just think it's awesome how God just worked things out. Um, I was only there about maybe four months. So I was like, well, I didn't meet anybody yet. <laughs> and so he was, and I don't know, we just got into conversation about relationships. And he told me how he met his wife, which was my employer. And um, wonderful story. He lived in Jersey. She lived, I think, Virginia. And next thing you know, he moved. Strategy was he found work down here in his field. And then he also started their own company together where they own a whole um, mental health agency. I just think it was awesome. And then they did ministry together. They worked together in ministry. I'm like, wow. Um, so you never know. You can't just, you can't um, put God in a box, really. You can't do that. At first, I was like, I'm not going to go on a website. And he at said, I can tell you not to type. I know you don't want. He said, I felt the same way. I'm not going on a website. No dating website to meet, even if they're Christian website to meet anybody, you know, but I thought about it because I know we communicate, people meet each other in different ways. Now, this is just a, a different form of communication and meeting people, whatever, but you got to be careful. You have to use wisdom. You have to use discernment and all that good stuff, right? Anyway, back to, um, you know, meeting people and, and, and but how distance sometimes is a it don't have to be a barrier, but it's a barrier for some individuals. So with that particular person, long distance was like not happening at all. And so we, we did vibe together on many levels, but there were a few little things. It was like, eh, I, I don't know. I'm even going to get into that one right now. So I want to go to mindfulness. And these are out of my experiences and what I took note of. I just, things I pay attention to attention to because I am an individual. I am mind. I try to be mindful. We don't get everything perfect all the time, but I try to practice good communication. I try to practice good communication and being an example. So I'm mindful and thoughtful of other individuals and of myself. Mindfulness, for those of you who don't know, is it means being aware, being alert of not only yourself, 
but of the other individual. So being aware of how and what you say and how it impacts the other individual, their thoughts, their feelings, their actions, their language, whether it's verbal, whether it's nonverbal, um, accepting others' thoughts and feelings and opinions and acknowledging others' thoughts, feelings, and opinions and ways. Got to be mindful. Know why? Because being mindful actually helps you improve your communication, improve your relationship with that person. You get to know them better. You're not just focused on you. You're not self-absorbed. You are considering the other person. And I'm going to get to consider it because I have that under being thoughtful. So all this ties together, mindfulness, thoughtfulness, and then I'll get into the standards and meaningful content. Those are the all, all four things I want to kind of discuss during this segment. But, um, you know, being aware and all of that stuff and paying attention to someone else's values, someone else's um, passions, things that are important to the other individual. That's going to build a healthy, strong relationship. That's going to create a good foundation for any kind of relationship. So a bonding, any type of bonding, um, if you're selfish, you can't bond at all. You can't connect because you're not trying to get into the other person's mind and world or, or seeing things through their lens you're only looking through your lens so you're limiting yourself and the relationship so being mindful is important to be being mindful also means being present being aware of what you're saying in the present now so you have to take thought and see that's how thoughtfulness ties into this you have to take thought pre-thought if you will I'm making up that word I don't know if it's a word into what you're saying before you say it as much as possible. Um, again, you're thinking about all the things that matter to the other person as well as yourself. And being aware of that because you understand that being mindful means you're thinking about, when I say this, I'm also thinking about how is this going to come across to him? If you're male, how is this going to come across to her? Is she going to understand what I'm saying? Like I always say, whether you agree or not, it's not about that. First of all, you just want to go and approaching your relationship in the right tone, in the right um, intent. So, and not being selfish. Thoughtfulness is a lot. Being respectful. All of this, show, you're showing respect to the other individual. So, really, I don't even have to really define respect. You're paying attention to the other individual. You care about the other individual. You're considerate. You're mindful. So... If you practice just, just those two alone, you're showing respect for the other individual. Being responsive, um, having good responses and being considerate and caring. You show that you're concerned and you care. That's very attractive, especially to young to women, to young women. Especially to women, but young women like myself. Um, that means a lot to me. I see, I'm, I'm, I'm thoughtful of all of that. I keep a record of like, okay, um... I know some of my friends watching this are going to laugh because they know me. <laughs> but I keep a record of, as I tell people all the time, journal the things that matter to you the most when you're trying to meet that individual that you want to spend the rest of your life with. Things that matter. I'm not talking about make this list you, and, and you being a stickler and you can't be flexible in some things. I'm talking about things that you cannot compromise on. One of them can be your spirituality or your relationship with God. Being a godly individual, knowing that that person have to be a godly individual. And if they're not, then that's a deal breaker. So, yeah, some things are unmovable. <laughs> they're un non there's no compromising in those areas. So, yeah, write those things down. Write down your standards. Write down things you know you can't compromise on at all. There's not even a discussion or argument about it. So, but, you know, but write things down that matter to you the most, which includes those things that you cannot compromise on. Things that you're real passionate about, guess what? They matter because they affect you. They affect your heart, your emotions, your mind, your intellect, your psyche. They, they affect you in all those areas. And so you need to be aware of that. So be mindful of yourself. Self-aware. Always say it's very powerful. Respect yourself. And other people respect you. Even if it doesn't work out, guess what? At the end of the day, they respect you for who you are. And they remember you. And you never know how you affect other people when they're not with you anymore. I know I try to practice of leaving depositing something that can't be erased from that individual. So when they meet the next individual, mm, they may, you know, you may they may use something, a lesson that they got out of um, encountering me. Anyway, that's how 
I don't know, I try to be positive, <laughs> but that's my life goal, trying to be positive. Just I just type I'm just the type that like to see the positive out of things and don't don't focus on the negative things. You know, this can be used for the future, either for something that that didn't go right or something that wasn't too, you know, mm, didn't work out well for whatever reason. It was a negative situation. Still see how can you can still learn a lesson out of that. Something you know not to do again or what red flags to look for. So there's a, like I said, these are wonderful lessons that you can learn in your singleness. And I'm going to talk about the comparison thing in a minute as well. So yeah, being respectful. So reframing, refrain from lustful activity. So important. This is this falls under being respectful. These are things, again, I'm reading to you from my board, relationship, vision, faith board, if you will. <laughs> I just made that up. I just wrote a few points down. But I'm like, hey, this is my relationship vision board. Let's call it that. Because um, I'm sure it's going to uh, resonate with somebody. For me, I don't like people who I, you just meet with them. I don't like it doing a whole relationship. You're just really lustful all the time your mind because I can be analytical at times I won't say I'm an analytical individual by label but I can be analytical in certain areas when it comes to certain things and because I am a thinker um, and I am mindful of the other individual in their language and in their character and I am mindful of what triggers me I pay attention to other people's Language, like I talked about before, what mindful means, and those are some of the meanings of it. Because I pay attention to all of that, if I meet an individual and they just seem to always be in lust mode, I'm like, wow. Automatically, that's a deal breaker. Because we can't talk, we can't get past anything else except for your visualness. <laughs> I make up words, I tend to make up words. All you're talking about is how I look, and oh, and, and you know, you that's just a turn off to me. I'm like, is that it? Is that all? Turn off to me. So refraining, refrain, or someone who has, what's the word I'm looking for, people? You're discreet. You're respectful. You value women. Because I feel when you value women, you respect women, you wouldn't go to certain places with them. Mm. So it's just certain things I pay attention to that's an auto, a automatic deal breaker if you don't have those type of qualities as well. And oh, you know, and I wrote the word text and calling. And I also, okay, so I have the word vague. Let me talk about that. I think as I thought about that when I met someone um, recently. No, well, I don't say I, I didn't really meet them. You know how you just on social media, different social media networks and you come across individuals and you have like a few light conversations or whatever but I noticed a few times they try to reach out to me and um but the conversation was always vague I'm like I don't know what's going on here you, you know so it never got my attention at all so it was like oh whatever you know whatever the case is he gave me food compliments or whatever I like your spirit and all this stuff but anyway I want to share something that happened to me recently I think that's why I put this up here so there was an individual that I met, like I said, on social media network maybe last year. Maybe like two years now, actually. Actually, it's about two years and three years because I was in New York, I believe, when I first encountered this individual on a social media site. And, and then, you know, said a few words here and there. I think it was Google+. Plus. <laughs> I'm telling all my business, right? But anyway... Um, you know, profile, because a lot of people do connect there. You meet, you sometimes people find jobs on these sites, LinkedIn and all. And it was LinkedIn or Google Plus. Anyway, that's irrelevant. Um, I think we exchanged a few words, had some great conversations. I might have had maybe one telephone call, and then that was it. I didn't hear from him. He didn't hear from me. I'm sure I'm not going to chase you down, especially if I don't feel we connected in any kind of way. And um, so recently, like this weekend, <laughs> I don't think he's going to see this video. And he might, and I don't even care. Um, he said, I was, I'm in town. He was letting me know that he was in town. And he would like to meet up with me so we could see each other in person. I was like, oh, that would be nice. Okay. You know, I wasn't doing anything really. Only thing I did say, let me know if you're not going to meet up. Because if, um, if you're not, then I may decide to drive to Raleigh or Lynchburg or Charlotte. I don't know. I have some girlfriends in other states. And Maryland, actually, too. I was thinking about seeing a few, one of my BFFs. Right, he said, "Okay." He said, um, "All right, I'll let you know." I said, I, "I'm still kind of new. I don't know a whole lot of places. I, I know some places you can eat out at if that's what you want to do, but whatever, whatever." 
And he was like, oh, no problem. I'll do it. I got resources. He had family, friends here. He said, I'll look for the place. I'll do all of that stuff. I'm like, okay. He said, definitely, I'll, I'll connect with you and let you know. Hmm. Today is Sunday. We were supposed to meet yesterday. Never happened. Good thing I wasn't even thinking about it anyway. I was like, oh, just be cool. Hey, how you doing? Whatever. Um, you know, he's doing a lot of things and the acting field and entertainment. I'm like, okay, we got those things in common. That seemed to be cool because there's some things I really want to kind of do that I never got to really get into fully. But I, I am I am a, a performing arts person, love the arts. And I was like, okay, great. And so we had a lot of that in common. When we did have conversations in the past, we would talk about those type of things. But I didn't even think about it because I haven't heard from him in maybe since last year, maybe the beginning of this year, maybe once or twice. And that was it. And that was maybe a comment or um, a, a maybe a quick little chat, like I said, and that was it. So it really didn't mean anything, but, you know, I thought he was cool, like, oh, I'd be cool to hook up and meet, you know, I'm networking, that's how you meet individuals, you never know what comes out of that. A lot of times it can be positive situations where it was divinely ordained, but this was not, clearly not the case at all. So anyway, I didn't hear from him or anything, and like I said, I already had forgot about it, I was doing my own thing, um, working on things for my business, working on my website, and I didn't miss nothing. I was just relaxing. I went out yesterday, rode around myself, went to a few places, took care of some business, went to some stores, and came home. And I was happy. Sure, it was okay with that. But I was just thinking about it. I said, wow. I said, you messed up already if I was interested in you because you didn't call. I'm like, look, I like to say I'm old school. But to me, it's not even an old school thing. It's being respectful and thoughtful and mindful. I already have mentioned that I might go out of town, so let me know, confirm with me if you're definitely meeting up. Because I'm the type of individual, if you're telling me you're coming, I'm going to put you on my calendar and my schedule. Meet so-and-so between this time and this time. I'm being respectful of you, and I would like you to reciprocate the same thing to me. Never heard anything. I think I woke up maybe 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, and I get this, I get this text. I don't have his number, so it, the name was in there, and it said... Hi, Cheryl something. I was like, is this, this, is this, this guy? And so when I went to bed and woke up a little later, maybe six in the morning or something like that, I went to where we were chatting at, I think it was Google Hangouts or something, and I said, is this you? Whatever, whatever, I got this text from this, you know, from this number. I didn't know if this was your number. Then later on I see he says, yes. You know, laugh out loud or whatever. And that was it. I was like, wow, that's interesting. You already turned me off, number one. You was not thoughtful. You was not mindful. You wasn't even considerate. At least some players, you know, they make it seem as if, you know, they care about you. They're, they're a call. They'll let you know, oh, I'm not going to be able to make it or something. Because they still try. I'm like, wow, that's very interesting. And, you you know, and, and see, I'm a thinker. So I'll start analyzing stuff. And I was like, okay, you got this persona online and everything that seemed to be like a thoughtful individual and a caring individual but I'm seeing a whole nother side of you I didn't judge him or put him you know use that to say he's a bad individual but I'm just saying I've thought about that I'm like wow that's so funny it's almost like I got a, a behind the scenes <laughs> um, view of somebody or vision of somebody I was like okay no problem I was like, okay, I, I might put you in the joker box. I don't know. I'm just saying. So that was that. So I, I think that's why I wrote down the word vague. You seem to be very vague. You didn't seem to be, to be very, even though you sound these wonderful things, and I like your spirit, and I think you're so this and you're so that, and I, I want to get somebody older because he's younger than me who's already in their queen status. I don't need anybody trying to figure. I mean, all these wonderful lines, somebody who's figuring out how to be a queen. They still trying to grow. I need somebody already there. So you dropping all this wonderfulness. But see, I don't get caught up in none of that. I just listen to people and let them talk. Because actions speak louder than words. In many cases, it does. So I was like, okay, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, whatever. That ain't trying to be nothing. I ain't waste my time. Thank God. Anyway, it's just very interesting. So I wrote, I wrote vague because of that. The whole thing was vague anyway. Um, so and But in the responses, they're very short. If someone, you have a conversation with somebody, you're building a relationship with someone, they're always very short in their responses. They never have any feedback. That's another term. It's like, ugh, I'm going to get to that later. That's, that comes under meaningful content. You're not putting out any meaningful content in the relationship or in our communication. Not good for me. So now I'm going down to standards reinforced. So the three experiences, I said good experiences I had with three men that I've met over the last, I say four years, three of those guys, and it wasn't a lot really, I think it might have been five altogether. <laughs> 
And that is not a lot compared to someone who's been divorced since in the 90s, actually. The late 90s going into 2000. Well, yeah, just leave it like that. Anyway, so, um, so five individuals, but three of them reminded me of my standards. What I liked about that because I was able to compare them to other guys that I met. It might have been six or seven when I think about the whole think about seven, eight, nine years, whatever. But um, they reminded me of my standards because with them, there were a lot of things that we, have in, that we had in common and we did connect in a lot of ways and we were equally yoked together in a lot of areas. But like I said, some factors that just didn't allow us to get together, one and one person be, like I said, distance. Anyway, not going to go back to that. Um, but just vibing with them and speaking with them. And we're cool. I'm cool with everybody. It's like we're still cool now, Facebook friends or... Twitter friends or whatever the case is. Life moves on. There was no bad blood. Everybody's getting along. We mature individuals. Hey, God bless you and your endeavors. And, and the same to you. Peace. All of that good stuff. Um, their standards were like mine. Similar to mine. Their values were the same as mine. And so it just constantly reinforced. Not that I was, I was going to settle or felt like settling for less. But it was a reinforcement of the standards that I have. And things that I was not going to compromise on. Because like I said, I'm friends with some of these individuals. Once in a while, we may talk and have a conversation. Hey, especially the ones that I really connect with. And so we just really cool that way. Um, talk about like some of our experiences. It's so, it's so interesting. But um, so that was just, just, I don't know. But anyway, so um, standards reinforced also. Um, it's just a good thing to be able to compare and have that experience of because sometimes if you don't if you don't meet different people especially if you haven't been out courting or dating I'll say for those of you but I like to date with a purpose I like more of the courtship because courtship is you both individuals who do want to get married again and you're trying to see your whole your in intention is to see if you two are compatible enough or feel that God is connecting you or whatever um, to have a future together so um, so I don't do the, I don't, I'm not into the random dating, but if I am dating, I'll say dating with a purpose, the purpose of meeting uh, your future mate. Um, so anyway, so that was under standards reinforced. I was going somewhere. I forgot where I was going with that. Meaningful content. So what I mean by meaningful content, being able to have an intellectual connection, really, um, and I, again, like I said, these experiences are so great. They give lessons because I remember two individuals, one in particular. I remember that every time I would get into a deep conversation, I'm not, not saying always getting some deep, you know, thought of something and theory you want to discuss and all of this of spiritual, but you need to be able to have that with somebody you're going to be with, especially if that's a part of your life, your spirituality, your relationship with God. If you can never talk about your relationship with God, that's a deal breaker right there for me anyway. So I just know with the individual, every time we get into a deep conversation about the Lord or something, or maybe God show me a vision and see, this is all a good test because you may think I'm to this or whatever, whatever. And I'm like, and that's that person's opinion with somebody else. They may, <laughs> I may have to come up to their level, but anyway, I'm not going to get into levels because I'm not into all of that, even though you can be more spiritual, mature than someone else. And sometimes that can be a problem. Sometimes it may not be. It depends on how the other individual perceives things with him. Every time I would have these deep conversations, he never had a comeback or feedback. And he normally would say, I don't have a comment right now. That burned me up because if I can't connect with you intellectually, I am an intellectual person about certain things. And so if we can't connect that way. We can't have deep conversations about things because I am, like I said, I, I can be analytical in different areas. And for that, I like to get into conversations about the word or maybe something that happened. And then, you know, I get revelation. And so he can never get with it. And I'm like, wow. And so the comparison part comes in the guys that I was, um, Vibing with, like I said, we really connected a lot and shared the same standards. It just showed me how I cannot settle and get less than that. Because with them, we did connect spiritually, intellectually. With them, it wasn't work. It wasn't like a fight when we talked about certain things. It was almost like we could finish each other's sentences. It wasn't deep. Like, you know how you get each other? Like, I got you. I got you. I, I know where you're going. I know. I got We here. 
I got you understand. You don't even have to explain yourself, Cheryl. So that for me just reminded me like I can't be this individual. Because I've never get that with him. But I'll get it with, like I said, the guys that I did connect with. So easy. I'm like, wow, you're so easy to connect with and communicate with. So I know that communication is high on my list, on my vision, relationship vision board. Very high on my list. Um, but I was like, oh, this ain't going to work. Because you can't keep coming back with, I, I don't have any, I can't comment right now. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why you can't comment right now? So that let me know, like, okay, intellect, it, it matters intellectually where you are and where the other person is, and you both can connect that way. Because things, again, that matter to you, hopefully they matter to them as well on some level, or you have a lot in common. And I always say, the more you have in common with the individual, the more compatibility that there is, then you have more meaningful content to share, because you both I have the same similar passions and likes and interests. So now you have a lot of things to talk about. It won't be a boring relationship. <laughs> because you have these things in common. You both get excited about the same things. You both are passionate about stuff. So when you have these conversations, it's like you can talk for three, four, five hours. Like, yes, oh my, having a great time. Not even going out. You don't have to do all the extra stuff. You can just sit down and vibe. That's awesome. To me, that matters more than the flowers and the candy. Anybody can bring me flowers and candy. Anybody can buy me jewelry. But if we can connect that way intellectual, I'll, I'm turned, Cheryl is turned on. Turned on, excited. I'm like, you got my attention. Because that's what's going to hold me anyway. That's what's going to hold any relationship. If you don't connect on anything else with something lustful, and that's not happening with me because I'm like, look, celibate until marriage. Not a shame of it. So if you have, don't have anything else, and that's why it's so great to practice um, being celibate. I'm going to talk about that one day. I love um, a few it's a few people I like to watch who are practicing this now. Some of them are uh, people that we know about in the entertainment industry. Um, I love that message to put out there to let people know that's another choice. People not trying to make you be celibate because they are, but it's to remind people. But there is, that is another lifestyle choice. You don't have to do this because everybody else is doing that. Guess what? You get to know people on a deeper, deeper level and you're not clouded in your mind and you're not confused about the relationship because you don't, um, that sense, emotionally connected with the person or lustfully connected or became infatuated, whatever you want to call it, fleshly connected with the individual. And if there's nothing else there... That's not going to last forever. That's, it's not realistic in anybody's marriage that that's going to be there happening every day. That's just not the real. I've been married for almost 10 years. Okay? So, I know. So, that, that already brought me into my meaningful content part, which is the last point I want to bring up. Again, and I pr kind of pretty much covered a lot. Having valid um, responses, truthful and honest responses when you bring up a certain topic. And the person responses, again, seem to be mindful and they're thoughtful when they respond to you. They're taking into consideration what you feel, what you've said, and they're being considerate and they're being attentive. And that fell on the thoughtfulness and they're being caring. Even if they have a different point of view, guess what? They do it in such a way where they respect your point of view, but they're also going to bring another point of view. And if you're a good communicator, then you're open to listening to, okay, that makes, the, I understand where you're coming from with that. There don't have to be no argument. So again, I, the guys that we kind of clash sometime in certain dialogue that I would have with them, I was like, this is not going to work at all. We're clashing now, and I mean clashing now. We don't, we just don't get it. You just don't get each other. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. So, um, and it reminded me of like, okay, so I know that I can be with that type of individual because they're just, they're vague. They don't have valid or they're not honest in their responses to, with me. They never have any comeback. They can't, um, I can't carry on a conversation with them. So I'm not going to waste your time and surely not going to let you waste my time. So I think that is all I wanted to cover. I hope this was helpful to somebody, especially you single people out there who are desiring to get married again or meet, meeting that mate and then hopefully turning into marriage that you practice these things as well so you can attract a like individual, somebody who is mindful, who is thoughtful. And I tend for the most part do attract. Those are really only two individuals that it was like, we just clashed. It just wasn't nothing happening. And then the one person I said randomly 
<laughs> said he wanted to meet up and that never even occurred or happened but there was nothing there anyway um other than that, I connected on a lot of other levels. So, it, and it also, it gives me hope. Like, okay, there's somebody out there. So, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. Um, I have, I believe in purposeful living. And there's so many things to do out there. Positive things. And just constantly growing and learning from life lessons and journey. So, you know, this is, it's been good. It's been good. It's been good. So, anyway, thank you for tuning in and listening to my little rants. <laughs> I, I am doing, like a, again, a, um, a um, series of, on relationships, and I'm going to be doing it on Thursdays on Facebook Live. So that's Cheryl Howard dot get your life back. That's Facebook.com forward slash Cheryl Howard dot get your life back. And like the page and sign up to my email on Cheryl White Howard dot com. Get on my mailing list so I can send you, first of all, some meaningful content through email. But also, you can get notifications of when, of when I'm doing my next broadcast, when I'm, I am posted my recent post on a blog, or the next event that I'm going to be at and participate in. Anyway, you guys have a good evening. Have a good week. I pray blessings. I pray prosperity. I pray health and wealth. In Jesus' name, take care.